see this is why i wanted to think because there's so <laughs> there's so That's many so good photographers that come to my mind <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here with Rob, aka Downshift Media. I will plug his Instagram here. Um, go check him out, he's really good. And we're just going to do some talking about what he does, how he got into it. Uh, what got you into photography and videography? Uh, photography, um, owning a modified car. I owned a modified car and like everyone, Instagram came along. Got to take photos of your car to post on your Instagram. One thing led to another. Started having friends wanting photo shoots and it then became every weekend. So it was a point of let's try and make something out of it. Let's set up Downshift Media. Let's make a bit of money whilst doing something I enjoy. So done that for a good solid year. And then I got a job at Deutsche Tech where I ended up doing their social media for two years. And that is where I had to learn how to make videos very fast. First day on the job, I was asked to make a YouTube video. Never done it before in my life. Turned up with a gimbal, pressed record on my camera and got busy. And it turned out all right. From there, just the love and the passion of it grew. Have many, many opportunities. Uh, shot some cool cars, met some cool people. And yeah, it just carries on going. It was more of a just finding the love for the passion. And that's how I got to where I'm at today, basically. Build, building that love. So what car did you have that made you start getting into the... I had a Honda Civic EP3. Um, our intention with it was to be a track car, but I started to spend money on photography gear. So that kind of took the back burner, but I got it to a stage where I was quite happy with it. Took photos of it, spent good couple of grand on it, suspension, all, all the usual stuff. So, yeah. So how long have you been doing photography and how long have you been doing videography? Uh, see, on a see, photography on a serious level, probably three years. I mean, I've been doing it for four years, but my first year was kind of learning how a camera works properly, understanding angles, understanding how to edit, learning how to edit as well. Um, so yeah, that's probably been a solid three years. And then videography, mainly the last two years, I've really started to try and push myself with that. Obviously, a lot of content nowadays is video content. It yeah, seems to be business. everything's reels, everything's vertical filming. So it made sense to learn how to produce content like that because I knew it was going to be what everyone wants now. Perfect. So tell us what kind of photography and videography do you do you do because you do two aspects don't you you do the modified scene yeah. and the motorsport scene so it's yeah. quite important to so discuss both. originally a lot of my i suppose you'd call it following and fan base came from shooting modified cars anything that's got cool wheels air ride all of that kind of thing <laughs> um that is what i Grew, kind of grew my career around uh, a lot of friends I have all had modified cars so it was kind of being constantly surrounded by them just made it easier to shoot and it's what I enjoyed shooting because there's always interesting things on these cars to shoot whether it be the wheels whether it be what they've done with interior or the little extra carbon bits people add onto their cars nowadays it's just cool to capture them kind of things and people love being have, having photos to show off their builds motorsport wise um Obviously, 2023 was my first solid year within motorsport. I'd done a few bits before with Formula Women Racing, which is like a competition for young females who can work through their work through a load of different things to gain um, seat time in a GT car. So I'd done a load of work with them, which kind of got me in the door of motorsport. And from there, things have just seems to have exploded really uh, yeah. obviously doing the touring cars last season that is probably one of my biggest career highlights so far uh filming drifting in ireland as well with bc racing that was that was pretty cool um but yeah motorsport for me is where i want to push like this year hopefully it means more good weekends in paddocks smelling the burning rubber hearing all the drill guns and everything going off it's it's a cool experience it oh, is yeah. very cool 
love to get into F1, but <laughs> there's a lot of things you have to do to get things ticked off to get into the F1. So we, we'll see, maybe, maybe. A couple of years. We'll never say no, never say no. So, um, of course, I think everyone in the photography world has got people that have influenced them. Yes. Who have been your main influences in the you know, journey to where you've come up to now? Main obvious influence for me, and I imagine it is for most automotive photographers, is Larry Chen. Yeah. The work rate he puts in, the photos he produces at the locations he goes to as well are second to none. Uh, I've been lucky enough to meet him as well. Absolutely sound, such a nice guy. What about videographers? You must have like one or two. Yeah, Vid videographers is a bit easier for me because, I mean, you've got Batch Visuals, who is huge over in Europe. He does a lot of motorsport stuff. Um, UK wise, I will give my boy Big Red Media a shout. He's absolutely killing it at the minute. His content is fire. Um, and then over in the States, you've got people like, uh, it's really hard to pronounce his name, Wishiness Media. He does a lot of big 4K cinematic kind of videos rather than the quick, fast paced reels. And yeah, I mean, again, there's so many good videographers and photographers out there. It's hard to just say these have influenced me because I take influences off everybody. You can learn stuff off so many different photographers, different styles, different angles to shoot cars. And yeah, it's just an, an overall collective of a lot of photographers. I enjoy looking at their work and it's just inspired me to get to where I'm at today, I guess. You see something you would have never thought to take. That's how I've kind of yeah. got it. I love looking at other people's work. That's how I've kind of thought of getting this channel and getting photographers in because the whole point is everyone has this unique way of showing exactly them. that. And they'll, you, especially with cars, they'll put a car in a, you can have 10 photographers, the car will be parked in the same place and none of them will get the same shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be one or two side shots that look identical, but they'll all get different angles. Different angles. Like, I never thought about that angle or I never looked at the car that way. And yeah. I find that so interesting to see how that develops and stuff. So, yeah. But even when it comes down to the editing as well, like, yeah, you'll know yourself, you can edit the same photo so many different ways to create a different mood. And it's always good to see how other photographers, especially if you're on the same shoot with them, because yeah. then you get to see how they've imagined the scene where you've, how you've imagined it which i always think is another cool thing to do probably a lot of people watching this are either into photography wanting to get into it professional or are just beginning what advice would you have my honest advice would be just to not give up genuinely if you've got the passion to do it you can make it happen that's all i like when i started four years ago i had i didn't know how to use a camera I was going out with a Nikon D50, pressing buttons, not really understanding what to do. And then I took it upon myself because I started to enjoy it to actually learn and take the time to learn. And then to just keep going with it. Keep, just get out wherever you can to take photos. Not necessarily like, I don't just take photos of cars. Like I'll go to London some days and just walk around the streets taking photos because it's developing your skill and your eyes to capture what you need to capture. Well, for me, this is my this is my hobby. This is my passion, and I'm so lucky I get to do it as a job. Um, but to get into it in a professional level, for me, I found that you can literally you can sit there all day sending out emails, and you, nine times out of ten you won't get a reply. The best way to do it is to get in front of these people, show them what you can do, work for free if you have to, just to get your foot in the door to start. Do a day or two for free, which is how I got into touring cars. I did a day at Silverstone completely free of charge. I created four reels and I think it's about 50 images. It landed me a full season to 2023. So you have to give some to take. Precisely. Very often and very often. A lot of people think that you, you should never shoot for free, which I used to be that person, but sometimes you have to, like you say, you have to give a bit to receive a bit. And the other good thing, you need to network as well. Yeah, networking is one of the biggest and most important things. Like if you're if you're not networking and you're keeping yourself to yourself, no one's going to find you. No one's going to know who you are, and you're restricting your your work to who it's seen by. So Get there's there's tired. so yeah there's so many things you have to take into consideration. But my main my main advice would be just to keep going. Well, it's how we we first started speaking. I just messaged you yeah. out the blue. I went, I love your work. 
let's do something together and here we are today here we are today and we're going out and having fun and i'm sure this won't be the last episode you'll see if not of many that we're going to do together i definitely have to come down to a race day have to get you down to a race day love to i think that should be in another episode we do together sounds good to me what gear do you use oh um for i'll start the video gear that i use so i use an a7s3 um generally because i film a lot of vertical stuff um for instagram i just stick a 24 mil prime lens on it it's wide enough for what i need it to do most of the times um then i have a 35 mil sigma 1.4 which i use as well uh dji pro gimbal rs3 it's got all the fancy handles on the sole little extra bits um and then photography wise i've got the a7 III, which i'm looking to upgrade this year it was my first mirrorless camera as such so it's been a good camera to be fair it served me three years and it's yeah, been solid really good cam time. yeah good camera for what they are uh Again, I pair that with the 24 and the 35 mil, and then I've got a 70 to 200 G Master, which I use mainly for the motorsport stuff. I haven't really, I'm not one of these people to invest in every single lens because I don't need every single lens. No, I, think, I just get what I need and what I know is going to be worth having. I think there's this big thing about people getting loads of lenses, and I think that for me, I pretty much only ever used a 35mm. Yeah. I think for you in the motorsport, you've pretty much only used your 24 for the close-up stuff and then the... Uh, 70 to 100. And I think it shows that you don't need to go out and get all this gear. You can do a lot with yeah. a little. Well, even like video-wise, I don't... You'll see videographers, they've got these massive gimbals with all these screens on them, field monitors and etc. I don't use any of that. I just literally flip my screen out on my A7 III and away I go. It's a lighter payload, it's easier to walk around with. If I want to use the gimbal upside down, I haven't got to worry about flipping all my screen around. So for me, it's just a case of having the gear that makes it easy to do the job. Yeah, it's what works for you. Yeah, I think 100%. that's the biggest thing. Don't be impressed by other people's camera gear. Do what works for you. I mean, you don't even need a decent camera now. Right? No. You can create images. I, I really want to get my old Nikon D50 back out. And just to see how well I can use it now after so many years of doing it. Because I still think you could create a good image off a cheap camera. Well, I started on a cheap camera and I think it taught me more. Yeah, exactly. You really learn. Because you, uh, my biggest advice to anyone that wants to get into it is get yourself a cheap camera and learn how to shoot. Learn how to frame. Don't worry about the quality of the pictures. Even, mm -hmm. But if you get that down... And then you get a more expensive camera, your life will be so much easier. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So today we will be shooting AKA Purist, which is uh, a car owned by Nick Sahota. I'll plug his Instagram here. Go check him out. It's got some very cool collection of cars. Um, very cool collection. Very cool. Very collection. cool. This E30 is far from being pure. It's been completely modified. It's got air ride. It's got the S54 engine out of the E46 M3. The interior is different. It's got different front lip. It's got an Evo 2 front lip. You'll see all of this during the course of the day that we're going to be shooting the car. It's on Bugatti wheels for which not just one but two Bugattis have had to be cut up because they're both front sets of wheels. So that's probably the coolest feature on this car. So we're about to head out and go shoot this car and come along for the ride. Start with the side shots. Start with a nice easy shots to warm up. Go F2.8, one over 60th. It's 
not a bad start. Get a nice easy angle. CPL turn around. 2.8 again. Cool. It's looking nice. Side profile of the wheels. Drop down to F1.8. Too high, so I'll bring that bit lower in the frame. It's better. Same on the rear. So these are just easy shots to warm up with. 1.8 again. The rear shot could look quite cool, hide the bollards, turn the CPO around. Let's take a landscape here as well. Maybe this is like more of a three quarter. Have to remove the post in Photoshop. Okay, I'm going 2.8. Start. Let's try some details while we're on the rear. Try to get some full cool angles here. Just gonna change my focus zone. Gonna go down to f1.6, slightly underexposing. Nice. Let's get a quick close up of the exhaust as we're here. F1.4 on this. And then one of the close up these lights as well. This one I'm going to take up to 2.8. We'll take that shot again. So that's cool. Such a cool car. Such a cool car. Do some obvious details. Go to F2.8 for this, just because we want to try to keep it all in focus. 4.5. Another angle of that. Let's get a bit
Ja, oh. Cool. Classic look down shot. That's a beautiful shot, that. Not bad. Not bad. Can we move it? Let's put it on a three quarter angle in front of this garage. Two point Slight more of an angle. Good. Don't know, we might lose. Oh no, we can just about see it. Just trying to get a good angle. It's not bad. Yeah, I'll get 
shot of it. Oh, this is last in front, to be fair. That's a very nice photo. Right yeah. Oh, you're going back up. Lovely. Thank you.